Hello my loves and welcome to the Mum Boss Method podcast coming to you a day late today because yesterday we were travelling back through France and it was nigh on impossible to record a podcast so I'm doing it today. I am, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, I'm here with wet hair because drying my hair was just one step too far today. Um, I will go and do it in a minute when we're finished here and when it's a little bit drier and I can be bothered. So there you go. Um, so if you are new to the podcast, this you are joining me today for a Mum Boss at Home community check-in. This is where the ladies in my community complete a check-in form um, that they share their wins, they ask lots of questions and share with us as well their challenges and I spend time on the podcast answering and helping them and celebrating with them and not only does it help them but it helps you as well. If you would like to know how you can become part of this community then check the links in the show notes. I would love to help you. Um, This is a little call out for the ladies in my at-home community. Where are you all? I realise that for most of you, it's the last week of the summer holidays. Um, But we have had a really, really low number of check-ins this week. So I am expecting lots and lots of check-ins next week where you all show where you should all show up for yourselves um and uh you get promising yourselves what you're going to do and let me help you so we've got some chunky questions but like i say not many check-ins i'm thinking either everyone is okay just ticking along or because it's the last week of the holiday you're all you know kind of able so let's share wins then um lisa has just had major surgery well done lisa um she has been feeling very sore but showing her self-kindness well done um she also said that hospital food is minging so she's definitely not hitting any kind of protein goal i i'm not surprised my love just do the best you can you're home now so um keep going keep resting keep looking after yourself well done um okay charlotte has upped her water and she's done four lots of exercise laura's been away all weekend at a wedding and had the best time soph ran her furthest since before having her daughter and that was in 27 degree heat as well well done soph hannah got all of her walks in this week and two workouts too Claire had a good weekend, lots of exercise and eating good choices. And Angela had her step count averaged at approximately 10k per day last week. So well done, Angela. Okay, um, let's go through um, let's go through the challenges and questions. So I've been overwhelmed by life the last few weeks due to work being really busy, no childcare meaning having to work super early and late at night my husband's been working away my daughter randomly has gone back to not sleeping a house that is never clean the dog suddenly shedding all all the hair tons of washing to do etc etc it all just got on top of me and meant i put off tracking food as one thing i then didn't have to think about i don't think i've been eating, been eating really badly i try to counterbalance the no logging by eating meals i usually have but there have been some convenience food and takeaways i think i've probably wiped out my deficit but no, not gone over my calories by too much i've ch- managed to get in a in a bit of batch cooking in the last few days to help get me back on track even though things are still busy and have refocused my mind to prioritise my health again. Okay, firstly, well done for refocusing um, to prioritise your health again. And secondly, breathe. Okay, because it sounds like this has been a lot. It has been really tough. Let's start here with the not tracking. Okay, you all know that you do not need to track to lose body fat. But for some of you, it really helps you to stay accountable. So 
the decisions you've made around sticking to similar foods to what you're used to is a great way of helping you through these situations. One, because you roughly know where they sit in terms of calories, protein, and keeping you full. But secondly, it takes away a decision. And it sounds like you've got some huge decision fatigue going on. OK, so you're helping yourself by doing that in more ways than one. OK, so you had some convenience food and some takeaways when when you've been time poor. Now, remember, these foods aren't the problem. It's the decisions you make around these foods that are because you can choose a reasonably goal aligned takeaway fairly easily. And the same with convenience foods. I've said this on multiple occasions that there are some convenience foods out there like ready meals and things that are really great for protein, fruit and veg, things like that. And they just take. I mean, I don't have a microwave, but if you have a microwave, they take five minutes in the microwave or they can go in the oven. Right. I know, for example, um, the M&S, um, I think are they called Count on Us. I always forget the name of them. Um, but M&S have some great ready meals, for example, which are really, really useful. Um, so it's not that convenience foods and takeaways are the problem it's the decisions around those so you know have you ordered um i don't know indian food and gone for the creamiest richest sauce you've got rice and bread as well as two sides or did you get something reasonably dry that came with vegetables and some salad on the side and then you know maybe You've gone for something like a chapati, which is um, infinitely less calories than things like naan bread and rice. Right. So you can make those choices around those foods. So I don't want you to demonize the convenience and takeaway foods. Um, one of my one to one clients eats out at, at what I would term fast foods. And we have a good natured bantery disagreement about this on a regular basis she loves nando's she has a nando's at least once a week but she also likes things like subway she likes chicken wings um so she'll eat out or eat convenience or fast faster let's call it faster food because she doesn't consider nando's fast food um she'll eat that normally at least once a week and that's fine, but it's about the choices you make when you're ordering that food and then the choices that you make around that food as well. So that's just a point for you to remember. OK, next, let's talk, let's talk about things like the washing and the cleaning. So I listened to a Mel Robbins podcast at the beginning of the year on this and it absolutely blew my mind. I'll dig it out and I'll share it um, again. It talked about things like washing and cleaning and household chores and seeing them as a cycle rather than things that either get that get done and get finished and ticked off the list. OK, because they're never done. They're never finished. You wear clothes, they get dirty. You wash them, you iron them, you wear them again. They get dirty. You wash them like it's a cycle. The same with the washing up, the same with the cleaning, the same with the food shopping. Right. You and, and they're all they're all linked together. So you buy food, you fill up the fridge, you cook the food, the dirty dishes need to be done. They need to go through the dishwasher or in the sink and then be put away. And then you eat and then you use them again. You get them dirty with more food from the fridge. And then all of a sudden you need to do the food shop again. You know, it's it's a cycle. So rather than thinking of these things as something that is done or not done, I want you to think of them as a, as a cycle. Now, this this podcast that I'll share with you completely changed my mind around these household chores and helped me to stop being so overwhelmed by them. And it was completely game changing for me. So like some of the things that some of the things that it made me change and I feel really silly saying them out loud because I bet I bet other people were doing this already but rather than um what 
did I? So rather than thinking, oh my gosh, I've got to get all that washing done in two days, bearing in mind, I don't have a tumble dryer, I don't have a washing line, so everything has to be dried on a era. I have got myself an electric one of those though. Um, I, rather than trying to get it all done in a couple of days, you know, saving it all up, normally until the weekend, now I'll do a wash load a day, normally. You know, and I don't mean I'll just wash three th items, I'm not that bad, but I'll do roughly a wash load a day because then it's living in line with that cycle, right? And things like, um, like the dishwasher, you know, rather than feeling like it always had to be me that emptied the dishwasher or 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 was responsible for for that you know i had a conversation with tom and i know that you're saying your husband's been working away but you know my conversation with tom was please can you empty the dishwasher before you go to work in the morning because i don't go down and clean the kitchen during my working day i don't you know my lunch stuff if the dishwasher is clean and not emptied, my lunch stuff goes on the in the sink or on the side. I do not clean up that kitchen during the day. Um, because again, cycles, you know, no, I'll clean it, I'll clean I'll I'll sort things out just as I'm as I'm doing um dinner. But if the dishwasher isn't emptied because Tom hasn't done that in the morning, then I feel like I then need to empty the dishwasher, put all of that away before I can put all of my, you know, my daily things away and get on with dinner. So like, I had that conversation with him about helping me to make sure that I can get dinner done at a decent time. So like I say, this really changed, this podcast really changed my mindset around all of these household chores. Um, and I'll send it out to, uh, to you um, once I've done this. So the other thing to think about is at the end of the day, will anyone die if your house isn't spotless? You know, currently in my house, because we got back at 10 p.m. last night, my there is two suitcases of washing that have been tipped all over the floor and put into piles. Um, but there's also still washing that I didn't do before we went that needs to be done. There's bed sheets that need to be done. Um, it's all over the floor. Okay, if I had someone coming round this afternoon, it wouldn't be all over the floor. But you know what? I don't. And that's the... Why am I going to bring it upstairs to put it in a pile in my bedroom or in the hallway? Only to bring it back down to, to wash it, right? So I, I've got... My house isn't spotless. The washing is all, all over the floor. You know, I still haven't properly unpacked because we got back so late last night I'm just prioritizing the things that need doing first things like this used to really overwhelm me um for me I need to make sure that everyone has underwear and something for wear to wear for the rest of the week for Charlie that's easy he's back to school tomorrow has Tom got jeans t-shirts and pants have I got clean gym wear and knickers and bras right I need to make sure that the kitchen is clean enough to cook in and that there is food to be cooked. So, yeah, my my actually my lunch stuff is now in the dishwasher because it was emptied this morning. But it's not per it's not perfectly spotless in there, but it's clean and I'll be able to what to cook the dinner. Uh, the food shopping got got delivered at 730 this morning. So, you know. The washing is overwhelming, but the thing is, I can choose to be overwhelmed or I can be realistic about this. There is no way I can do all that washing in one day. No way. I don't have enough places to dry it all. So I'm not even going to try. If I get three wash loads done today, that will be brilliant. That will be a brilliant start. I've already done two. I'm just waiting for the stuff that's drying to dry a bit more. And then I'm going to put on a gym wash just so everyone knows. OK, um, so yeah, I could let I, I I could let it overwhelm me, or I just be really res, uh, realistic about it and decide uh, this is this is where we are. Now for the general overwhelm, 
here's how I'd approach it. I'd write a list of all of the things that you need to do and prioritise them. And it's really easy to say, I don't have time to do that. I don't, I'm so busy, I don't even have time to write a list. And I want to I want to call BS on this. I just want to say, you know what, don't scroll for five minutes or just just force yourself to do it. Force your set a timer. It doesn't even have to be five minutes. Emptying your head will help you. And then I want you to think about what can you do to make things as easy for yourself as possible. So empty your head and prioritize that list and then think about what can you make as easy for yourself as possible? So an example here on my return from holiday, I've made things as super easy as possible by having the exact same breakfast and lunch all week. OK, Chrissy, you normally do similar to that anyway. Yeah, but I didn't try to make them anything special. I've gone with the normal Chrissy breakfast. I roasted a chicken as soon as the sh shopping got delivered this morning. I whacked on the oven. I stuck a chicken, a roasting chicken in a bag in the oven. That will give me protein for the next three or four days, depending if Tom uses it too. Um, I'm just having wraps. I can't fold wraps, so I'm making wrap pizzas, just so everyone knows. Um, and I'm just they are what I'm doing. I'm chopping up the salad first thing in the morning whilst I'm like making my coffee and stuff. And I literally am putting the wraps in a dry frying pan, getting them a bit crispy on the bottom, chucking on my chicken and my salad and my feta, sprinkling over some salt, pepper and lemon juice. And I have a wrap pizza. And then with dinners, I haven't been adventurous. They are all simple and quick dinners. Tonight we've got a stir fry. Tomorrow we've got turkey mince turkey chili thursday we've got salmon friday we've got fake fake away kebab and rice saturday we've got chicken paprika because i'll have a bit more time on saturday and that can go in the slow cooker right they are just really simple and i think probably four out of the next five meals I'm serving them with rice because I can cook rice in my sleep doesn't require peeling doesn't require the air fryer mug of rice two mugs of water a pinch of salt in the in the pan there you go 10 minutes bosh um and then lastly don't forget and I know you put this at the end don't forget to prioritize yourself on what you need it's so easy to put yourself at the bottom of the list but you will find that you cope with the overwhelm better if you don't do this. If you find a way of prioritising yourself at least part of the time through the day. I need a sip. Now, I recorded um, an ep a podcast episode with um, a lady called Charlotte Lawson to talk about overwhelm it's quite an old episode it's episode 72 but give that a listen she's got some tips in there as well so i really hope this helps and i hope that this week is better um, and well done for making the choice that you know making the decision to not to you know realize and recognize you need to put yourself first as well um okay so this person has said i've been tired and I struggled with motivation after we returned from holiday on bank holiday Monday. I couldn't find my groove. Um, now, what I want to say here is this is often something that happens and I knew this was potential for me to um, f to happen to me this morning as well. Um, it took me two weeks and four days to get over eight hours sleep on holiday like that is just crazy to me how it took until our last night of holiday for me to get I think I got eight just under nine hours sleep right so yes I have had the most amazing holiday I made so memory many memories I tried to be really present could I hand on my heart say that I feel super well rested and I don't feel tired? No, because I didn't. I don't feel like I caught up on sleep. I feel, you know, I was still waking up at 6 a.m. French time, which is 5 a.m. here. Um, and I didn't really nap in the afternoons. So 
um, I knew getting back so late last night, I knew that motivation and stuff would be so difficult for me this morning. So you know what I did? I didn't give myself a choice. I set my alarm. I set it for six o'clock. I woke up at five. I allowed myself half an hour to um, just read my book in bed, read my Kindle in bed and, and wake up a bit slower because I didn't need to be out of bed at five. I got up at 5.30. I put a wash on. I made myself a drink. I came and planned my day. I planned in what time I was going to the gym. I pla I'd already knew what lunches and stuff were going to be and I just got on with it. And then when it came time to go to the gym, I went off to the gym. OK, OK, I have the luxury of being able to go at 10 a.m. in the morning rather than having to go first thing or after work. Um, but I knew rather than telling myself, I'll oh, just ease yourself in slowly. I knew that wouldn't work. So don't wait for motivation. Just do it. This goes for after holiday or any time. Don't wait for that motivation because motivation is unreliable. OK. Right, let's see, what have we got next? Okay, um, I've got quite a chunky one to leave till the end. I'm going to go through these ones first. Um, due to tiredness, I've been craving sugar and fruit just doesn't hit the spot. I've started swapping out chocolate for one or two medjool dates, as while they're still 60 or calories each, I think they're there are a few health benefits to eating them and they do seem to help. Do you have any other tips for healthier things to eat to stop sweet tooth cravings? So some of this you've answered for yourself um, in terms of you've made, you know, a couple of swaps. But what I want to encourage you to do is change your mindset around this. OK, will the chocolate actually help? And will one or two squares actually cut it? So you're saying fruit doesn't cut it. Now, I know you've done, you've swapped the chocolate for the medjool dates. Um, but what you've done is you've identified that the sugar cravings are due to tiredness. OK, so you can search and search and search for sugar craving swaps until you're blue in the face right i love a medjool date but you know what when i want chocolate only chocolate will do i realized yesterday on the way home i'd really not eaten very much chocolate on holiday normally we buy you know a big bar of dark chocolate and i'll have a nibble of that every couple of days i did have ice cream most days but i didn't have you know actual chocolate and on the way home when we stopped at the tunnel, I said to Tom, I just want a bar of chocolate. And I actually was really disappointed with my choice. Um, I went for a lint bar that had, I think it was hazelnuts in it. And I think the chocolate had probably been there in the shop for a little while too long. It just wasn't very good. And so when Charlie opened his Toblerone, I also ate a chunk of Toblerone. Um, why am I telling you this? Because I could have eaten a couple of well I couldn't have I didn't have any medjool dates in the car on the way home from France but I could have swapped that for some fruit or some medjool dates or something a bit healthier in speech bubbles um but actually I just wanted chocolate and um I think if I'd had a really nice chocolate bar that would have just done the trick you know a 200 calorie chocolate bar bar would have just done the trick and then I wouldn't have needed to you know have that chocolate bar I did have and then have some of Charlie's Toblerone I was also tired it was a very long day yesterday um so you've identified that that this is tiredness okay and this is about having that internal conversation so there's a method called the HALT method and they use it in addiction circles but I think it's really really useful to use when you're having cravings and stuff and that is thinking about what is really going on here okay so are you HALT stands for hungry angry lonely or tired so if you are hungry if you are actually physically hungry 
eat? You know, if it's been longer than three or four hours since you last ate, eat. Are you angry? And you can replace angry with, are you sad? Are you, um, are you upset? Are you frustrated? Are you bored? Are you lonely? Um, you could also replace that with, you know, are you procrastinating? Are you um, frustrated? Are you tired? OK, because the only time you really need to eat when you're going through halt is if you identify that you are hungry because it's been longer than three or four hours since you ate or you didn't eat enough protein in your last meal. You didn't eat enough food in your last me meal. So recognising what's really going on. And the reason I say that is because absolutely you can you can say I'm tired. I've got a. I've got a bit of a sweet craving going on here. I'm going to have a couple of medjool dates. But if your daughter's not sleeping through the night and you're solo parenting or whatever is going on for people and they are, you know, the tiredness is likely to last for more than a couple of days. Are you are you just going to sit through those days and use that tiredness as a reason to eat, you know, two, three medjool dates or chocolate bars or whatever it is? The reason I'm saying this is you've asked for some other tips for healthier things to eat to stop a sweet tooth craving. And the fact of the matter is just like if you ha if you get sweet cravings just before your period, often that sweet craving won't it won't go away with two medjool dates or a whole chocolate bar. Yesterday I knew my sweet craving would go with a chocolate bar. I picked the wrong chocolate bar so I needed an extra bit of chocolate. But after that I was done, I didn't need any. If we're talking about sitting on the sofa after a really long day and you're just really tired because your daughter's been keeping you awake all night, is the chocolate actually going to help you? Is that going to fix the tiredness? If you're angry or frustrated or procrastinating, is it going to fix the anger or the or the loneliness or the tiredness or the frustration or the procrastination? No. So what I'm what I'm saying, and I don't know whether I've said it, said it very articulately here, <laughs> probably because I'm tired, um, is you're likely to not be able to stop a sweet tooth craving if it's driven by tiredness. Actually stopping a sweet tooth craving because you're tired is about getting on top of the tiredness just like stopping a sweet tooth craving because you are angry because you've had a row with someone or stopping a sweet tooth craving because you're bored at work or you're procrastinating or you're frustrated or you're sad because you're using the food to deal with an emotion or a physiological state i.e tiredness and really, that's not going to help. Our, our body desires sweetness, sweet, fat, carby stuff when we're tired because it wants an instant hit of energy. Actually, we need to find... Phone's ringing, that's embarrassing. I had to pause because Charlie's out with some of his friends and I always worry that if I see a phone number that I don't recognise, that that's one of his friends calling me and I'm like, I'm panicked that something's wrong. Nothing's wrong. It was a scam call. Anyway, um, yeah, the food, the sweetness is not actually going to fix any of these problems. Even if you're hungry, right? Think about how we are with our kids. If our kids say to us, I'm hungry, can I have a chocolate bar? No, because a chocolate bar won't fill you up right no you know fruit or some protein an actual meal will fill you up a chocolate bar won't so you can search for loads of other things to fix your sweet craving but really it's about thinking about what's going on underneath here recognizing that that craving won't hurt you and i say this when when i talk about you know like period pre-period cravings as well um when i used to get pre-period cravings i don't get them anymore but when i used to get them i knew that it didn't matter if i ate i don't know 
a twirl, a double twirl, a giant twirl, that I would want more, 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 more. So sometimes I just was like, I'm not even going to give in to it because it's not actually going to help, you know, and I'd just be, I'll eat 200 calories of twirl and I would probably be able to eat another 800 calories of it. It's not going to fix it because it's not actual, actually a physical need. It is an emotional desire. So, so, if you, you know if you're enjoying your medjool dates have your medjool dates if a couple of times a week you want a couple of squares of chocolate and they fit into your calories have a couple of squares of chocolate but i would say that rather than looking for a treat that's going to help you with the sweet craving actually working out what's going on under there and recognizing that 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 sweet treat is not going to help with how you're feeling recognizing that the craving won't hurt you um, is more is a more long-term strategy because unfortunately it's a part of life that sometimes we're going to be tired and we can't do a huge amount of that about that um and yeah i hope that helps with that one um we've had a couple of um questions in here about food ideas as well um protein based lunch ideas to take to work and then alternatives for an evening snack something savory and crunchy these questions are questions best asked in the um in the whatsapp group firstly i'm a sweet girl i my evening snack is going to be something sweet and secondly you know why use just my mind when there are 18 others of you in the group that can also help with um, food ideas? So ask those questions in the group for sure. OK, right. What have we got next? So we've got a question about the... Um, about the fat loss injections. So one second while I just bring up my answer that I typed out. So I have actually spoken to this person on WhatsApp individually about this question as well, but I thought it was a really good um, question to share again on the podcast. So what would be your views on taking the fat loss injection whilst doing my programme? Um, and here's, here's my kind of responses to this. So I did mention this on the podcast two weeks ago, um, when one of the ladies asked me my views on the fat loss injections, um, because they'd heard, you know, lots of mixed messaging about it. So I did, I did mention that on the podcast two weeks ago. So if you haven't listened to that, and that is just a reminder to everyone, even if you don't check in, even if you don't ask questions on a podcast, please do listen to every check in podcast, because just because you might not have checked in, just because you might not have um, asked a question so often the questions other people ask and the responses I give are so helpful for all of you so please do listen to all of all of them um, I also did um, a whole podcast on this topic when a Zempic became available on the NHS that's episode 82 um, if you want to have a listen to that although that was recorded when did I record that I'm just having a look that was like a year and a half ago. So um, we've kind of moved, not moved on massively, but it's much more mainstream now. Um, now, you all know me, you know how honest I am. And I've always maintained since the kind of bringing out of Zempic on the NHS that for some people, these weight loss injections will be the right course of action. But those same people still need to work on their habits, their lifestyle, their exercise, their relationship with food and their relationship with their bodies. And for that, they need support. Now, that support, if you are buying these injections online, rather than being prescribed them by your doctor, is not one guaranteed or two regulated. 
let's remember this is a drug. It's not a herbal tea. It's a drug that has side effects and is being sold online for around £200 a month. And in some cases, with very little support and guidance. And because it's a relatively new product, so I recorded that podcast 18 months ago. So Azembic has only been available on the NHS for 18 months. OK, I know that you've been able to get this weight loss drug for longer than that. But because it's a relatively new product, we don't have enough evidence to show us the long term effects of its use. And we know that some of the side effects might be gastro related, so it's nausea, sickness, um, problems with constipation, problems with diarrhea, problems with bloating, because at the end of the day, it is changing how you eat. But there are also more, um, there are also reports of other side effects that are a lot more serious than that, um, that cause, you know, that these things are causing illness. OK, now the facts are these injections work because they stop you from feeling as hungry. And the guidance for most of them is that you eat breakfast and then you don't eat any other meals. OK, now this person who asked this question said to me, oh, but there are, you know, there are some people that are still eating three meals a day on 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 the injections. My question, my question then would be, well, what's the point? Um, so these the injections stop you feeling as hungry, therefore you eat less and therefore you find it easier to stick to a calorie deficit because eating whilst using the injections can make you feel sick. So it's designed to stop you eating after breakfast. You eat your breakfast and then you don't eat for the rest of the day. So it works by putting you in a calorie deficit. The calorie deficit, you know, because you work with me, you listen to me, you read my content, you know, you need that calorie deficit to lose body fat. It isn't magic. It just does that by making you feel less hungry. And often people feel sick if they eat after they've had their injection, which I don't know about you, but sounds unpleasant. OK, one of my greatest joys in life is eating. I enjoy eating. I don't particularly enjoy things like smoothies because I enjoy the experience of putting food in my mouth and chewing it rather than drinking my food in the form of liquid calories. So my question specifically for this person, because I know your history, is how is this injection going to help you long term? How is it going to help you with your relationship with food, with your relationship to your body? How is it promoting good health? You've you've said to me that, you know, you've heard of people eating three meals a day. So my question to you would be, what's the point then? If you're if you're going to tell yourself you're going to take this weight loss injection and you can going to continue to eat three meals a day when you don't even know what the side effects are you experience might be like what's the point are you just hoping it stops you from eating as much is that is that what you're hoping the the what i'm hearing for you for you specifically is that it's a quick fix that you want you want a quick fix um and you specifically have gone after quick fix options before which long term haven't worked for you because you're back here. OK, you're with me. So ask yourself this. How are you? I want you to take some specific responsibility here, getting in the way of sticking to your habits and your deficit and changing your lifestyle. And most importantly, changing your mindset to get the results that you so desperately want. And what will it take for you to face into that rather than looking for an intervention that is a quick fix? I also want you to think about what will make you happy. So you want fat loss. 
why will that make you happy? I want you to go into Everfit and go through the why exercise, the exercise in the resources that, that asks you why over and over again. I want you to really truly understand what your goal is and why that goal is so important to you. Now, if you feel that this part is absolutely the right path for you and you decide to go through with it, then I support you. I will support you around how you should eat on the meals that you can eat and how you should move. And I've sent you some separate resources for you to have a look at privately and listen to and some questions for you to think about. But this is a message for everyone, okay? I've said already, there's a, there are people that this is absolutely the right path for. But the fact of the matter is, if you do not change your mindset around food, diet and exercise in your body, and you constantly see all of those things as the enemy, weight loss injections won't give you the results that you want. Yes, you will likely lose body fat as long as you stick to your calorie deficit. Because that's what it requires you to do is still stick to your calorie deficit. But there are some other things that might happen as well. So one, you won't learn anything or change your mindset. So when you stop using the injections, what's to stop the weight coming off? Because I bet the mindset you're in is I just need to lose this X number of pounds and then I can carry on with my good habits. But if you're not managing to stick to your calorie deficit now, if you're not managing to stick to your habits now, what's to tell you that you're going to manage to do it after you've used the injections? Because you won't have worked on your relationship with food, which for this specific person is already really difficult. You won't have worked on your relationship with your body. And you may well lose fat and then realise you're still not happy. You're still not happy with how you look. And lastly, I promote health here. And one of the healthiest habits you can have is exercise. And the person that asked this question specifically enjoys exercise and exercises a lot exercise is not this person's problem i want to ask you how you're going to fuel that all of that exercise eating one meal a day remember changing our body composition i.e losing body fat and getting that toned look requires lifting weights how are you going to fuel that activity and get the look you want just eating breakfast. And then finally, as just a bit of a, you know, look, I'm here to help women and I've got 60 women that I'm helping at the moment. Most of those um, weight loss injections are around 190, something like that, pounds for four weeks of um, injections. Six weeks on the last diet club program my hybrid one-to-one and group coaching program where i will have my eyes all over what is going on for you where you will get personalized feedback from me directly to you access to me on a higher support level than what you currently have cost 10 pound more than that six weeks of that support cost 199 pounds So you can absolutely, I've already said to this person, you can absolutely go down that route if you want. I will support you. I will be here for you. I will help you as much as you can. But I really want you to think about how that is a long term strategy. And if you want to change and start thinking about a long term strategy and really start facing into what is going on with you, really changing your mindset, really changing the way that you're viewing this. And and let's be honest, changing your life and making lasting changes for good, then I challenge you to think about picking up six weeks in the last diet club instead. And that goes for anyone, anyone that is thinking, you know what, I'm just kind of cruising along here. I'm not really getting the results that I want. Then 
come and talk to me about the last diet club and even if you're not if you're not in my community at the moment and you are um you're listening to this and you're thinking yes i need chrissy all over what i'm doing then drop me a message and come and um speak to me about the last diet club but to this person specifically if you if you choose to go down the weight loss injections listen i'm there for you i want to support you um but i want you to have long-term success and i'm really concerned that you're just thinking about a short-term fix okay that was longer than i thought it was going to be some chunky questions there right i better go and dry this mop thank you for listening everyone and i will speak to you very soon bye